Late-term abortion. It's a phrase that raises blood pressures across the political spectrum. For opponents, it applies to a practice they consider infanticide. For others, it's a degrading reference to practical and necessary medical procedures that preserve life. We'll explore which one of these is the truth about late-term abortion. To stay up to date on everything progressives care about, click the subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss a video. To learn the truth about late-term abortion, we have to understand the timeline of a human pregnancy, the words and phrases medical practitioners and legislators use to describe abortion, and when medical procedures during pregnancy are necessary. Doctors and legislators use trimesters to describe the timeline of human pregnancy. Trimesters are roughly three-month periods which begin at the moment of conception and continue until a baby is born. Human pregnancy lasts about 40 weeks. The first trimester ranges from 0 to 13 weeks, the second from 14 to 26 weeks, and the third trimester from 27 to 40 weeks. Humans delivered before the end of week 37 are considered premature and commonly need medical assistance in order to survive. In 2013, the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists and the Society for Maternal Fetal Medicine made a change to how the word term would be used in reference to pregnancy timelines. The period between 37 weeks and 38 weeks 6 days is considered early term. 39 weeks to 40 weeks 6 days is considered full term and 41 weeks 0 days to 41 weeks 6 days is late term. 42 weeks and beyond is considered post term. Therefore, the literal definition of a late term abortion should refer to one that happens between 41 weeks 0 days and 41 weeks 6 days. Practically, however, it refers to something far different. As the phrase late term abortion began to more forcefully enter into the American lexicon in the mid-1990s, there was an effort to define it. In 1998, three papers were published in the Journal of the American Medical Association on late-term abortion. All three sought to define the phrase. All three defined it differently. Because pregnancy is an extremely complex process, the language used to define it is similarly complicated. This leads to misunderstandings among the general public and legislators, and allows phrases like late-term abortion to take hold and affect opinions. Another one of these terms is partial birth abortion, which we'll get to in a moment. The Supreme Court was faced with a difficult decision in the Roe v. Wade case. How to protect a woman's privacy when balanced against the interests of states to protect the prenatal life of a fetus. To settle the argument, and because the court found that the 14th Amendment provided women with an inherent right to privacy, they settled on the trimester model as a framework for their decision. During the first trimester, no state could prohibit abortion. During the second, states could enact medical regulations on pregnancy which were, quote, narrowly tailored to protecting mother's health. Since medical science in the 1970s believed all third trimester fetuses were viable, the court ruled states could legally prohibit all third trimester abortions except where necessary to protect the mother's life or health. This ruling allowed a reasonable measure of time for mothers to first learn they were indeed pregnant and then decide if having a child was the right decision to make. During the first trimester, a mother had three months to ask, am I ready to have a baby, both mentally and financially? Additionally, those who had become pregnant after becoming victims of sexual violence also had time to struggle with the unfathomable decision whether or not to carry their rapist child to term. It also recognized that medical professionals who are sworn to protect life would never kill a viable fetus. If life-saving medical procedures can save the baby's life, every obstetrician on earth will take advantage of them. But real life is rarely so black and white. There are times when mothers and medical professionals must make choices that no one should ever have to make. I'd like to tell you about Dr. Jen Gunter. 
Dr. Jen Gunter is an obstetrician and gynecologist who has performed abortions. Her new opinion article in the New York Times is a fascinating read. I've included a link to it in the description below. In 1998, Dr. Gunter was faced with a terrible choice. A woman in her first trimester was on the edge of kidney failure, and her doctors felt an abortion may save her life. That year, the Kansas legislature had passed a law banning abortions on state property. However, the law also had a provision for allowing abortions which would save a mother's life. Dr. Gunter didn't want to be arrested for performing the procedure, so a phone call was arranged between her and the legislator who authored the law. After only a few moments of describing the situation, he interrupted her and told her to go ahead and do what she felt was best. The medical procedure was successful and the woman recovered, but it raises an important question. Why are legislators making decisions about what medical procedures can be performed when it's the medical practitioners who know what's actually best for their patients? This is where we come across what is known as a, quote, partial birth abortion. I want to be clear here. This phrase is not a medical description in any way. In United States law, it's used to reference an intact dilation and extraction, meaning a procedure that removes an intact fetus from the uterus. In the year 2000, about two-tenths of 1% of all abortions performed were an intact dilation and extraction. The procedure was outlawed in most cases by the 2003 Partial Birth Abortion Ban Act. They're performed when patients experience a miscarriage or when the fetus has been diagnosed with a severe abnormality and the parents have requested time to view the remains, grieve, and achieve closure. Partial birth abortion and late-term abortion are misnomers that refer to actual medical procedures, but with deceptive language that demonizes and degrades the exceedingly difficult choices that mothers and their doctors must sometimes make. When medical professionals have determined that a person's life is in danger, they are ethically obligated to do whatever is necessary to save it. When pregnancy complicates medical issues or when it causes them, sometimes the best decision is to end that pregnancy. No one likes abortion. But demonizing life-saving medical procedures that occur during the third trimester by calling them late-term abortions or partial birth abortions is downright insidious. If you've made it this far, please share your feedback below in the comments. We need to have a conversation on these issues. Whether positive or negative, I want to hear it. But please be respectful of others. I'm Ethan, the Progressive Liberal. Thanks for watching.